And we're back. Okay. So, I had a quick thought when I was on here. Yeah. That is in this one. So we probably need some type of markers for the players. Um, yeah, so we're gonna add that to the list there. Okay. Uh, so we're gonna. I'm just gonna summarize what we've done so far. And then I'm going to do the Axe and Club and then close out. <laughs> Guild of Dungeoneering. I've never heard of that. I will write it down. Uh, and I will take a look. I'm curious. Oh, see, I had thought about doing cards. And I love the idea of like making dungeons with cards. The problem is, is that card games like that are expensive to produce. Not that that specifically matters for a game design competition or anything like that. But it's one of those things where like, I'm kind of thinking a little bit further than just the end of the competition. Like if this idea is any good, then it's possible that I could do something with it. Um, so cards are cool, but they're kind of expensive. Um, and getting a board game published is just hella hard. Like it just, it's difficult. It requires too much money and resources to do without a publisher, and getting a publisher for a board game is next to impossible if, if, if you don't know somebody. <laughs> um, it's just really difficult. Um, so yeah, but it is interesting to consider, for sure. Because um, I was thinking like even something like uh, if you did uh, the search the room as cards, right? Where what you get out of the room is like it, it like changes what it, what it is, uh, like you could pick up items or weapons or like certain types of things. The technology could be mixed in. Um, so so that is something to consider. And having like a deck of stuff that you could possibly print with the product versus something that you'd have to produce is a viable option. Um, so yeah, those are some, that is something to consider for sure. So, um, what have we done? So we've kind of set out our theme, how we're going to interact with our themes. And we'll say setting ingredient here. Sunlight, getting two sunlight specifically. Uh, we're looking at alarm like a sandy meter. Uh, it works a lot better in sort of the escape style versus the like going into a dungeon style. But there is something that we could potentially do with this. Um, Still considering it, but there is something that we could do. Uh, we have our wants on our needs. I'm likely going to cut at least the first one. Uh, the second one we'll see. Um, mostly because I'm really liking the sort of aspect of, of having the other players choose things. Um, and the only way that you would get a single player mode is if you had software that could be the other players. So I'm actually going to separate them. Right? Because it, it just doesn't seem to me like it would work, especially with phases, if we we're going to do phases and stuff like that, like it would work with, with less than a certain threshold of players. Um, so yeah, these are things that we've discussed. Uh, gameplay. Uh, so in gameplay, we've talked about randomly generated maps. We've talked about um, 
the active player getting first pick and drawing the map, the other player is picking dice from a dice pool in order to, to, to generate the map. Um, entrances and exits, how are we going to handle them? Uh, are you going to have to search the room for them? Uh, hidden elements, like having the players, the other players, like the other players, the players other than the active player, getting to hide their roles. Having multiple maps and so that they, like, having a global map and then other maps, uh, each player having their own map that they can then have information on that other players don't know about. Uh, even, like, maybe finding technology. Like, if you find technology in a room, having that information on your map versus not everyone else knowing about it, right? Like, ways of obscuring the end goal. Make sure you have a good poker face if you're going to do that. Um, which, you know, that leads to different interactive, di it, different dynamics of interaction between the players. Uh, different size of dice pools. Uh, yeah. We got a lot of questions. Uh, we answered a lot of them, or, or started answering a lot of them. Uh, you know, What's the goal? To go down to, well, actually, I'm going to rewrite this. These were potentials, potential goals. I think the, the real goal here for our players is going to be to enter the dungeon slash room, find technology find the location of technology, because we're map making, they're not actually taking the technology out, they're just finding things. And getting back out safely, right? I think that's gonna be the, the, the real gameplay goal. Um, the other interesting thing about having you go down in and then try and get back out is that, uh, or sorry, the other interesting thing about having secret information is that if someone doesn't spring a trap in a room or something like that, then if a player goes back through that room, there's the opportunity for, for that stuff to come up again. Um, right? So that, that, that intrigues me. Um, global maps. Uh... Different types of obstacles. Dead ends have a possibility for you to not get another exit out of a room. Uh, different types of traps, other players. Um, is there going to be PvP combat? Seems likely at the moment, but not necessarily. Uh, Enemies or monsters? What types of enemies or monsters? Uh, stats. Wh where do we roll dice? Um, generating combat skills. All that kind of stuff. Materials. Materials are always important. Um, so my last thought, I think, before I call it call this done for today is that uh, with the elements of searching the room and stuff like that uh, do the players have equipment? Can they change equipment? Are there obstacles that can be avoided with certain equipment? I'm reminded of uh, the Games Workshop game Chainsaw Warrior, where you know you need a grappling hook to bypass certain areas, otherwise bad things happen. Uh, stuff like that. So, 
you know, that that's a potential option. Whereas certain characters who have certain gear types could potentially avoid certain types of traps, but not other types. Uh, stuff like that. And I realize that I'm being very trap-focused right now. Um, and that's okay. Um, so yeah. I think that's it for today. So, uh, Accidental Book Club. The Accidental Book Club is uh, my way of rereading, or of reading properly, the grand library of books about writing, uh, design, and art that I have, uh, and have never kind of read. Because uh, I'm the type who buys books and then sits on them, and if I don't read them within like a week, they kind of just go on the shelf and stay there. Uh, so, uh, this week we are continuing on with Sid Field's screenplay. And I'll flip that back around to the default there. Sid Field's screenplay. Um, I'm really enjoying this. It still seems a little old-fashioned to me, um, but a lot of the stuff he says about character and narrative construction is 100% accurate, and it's stuff that I use um, every day when, I, when I'm working on writing projects. Um, Unfortunately, I'm just been slacking like mad, and I'm still working on this. So it's gonna be another week. Uh, and the reason for that is, as much as I just want to move on and just read it in the off time, I feel weird about reading it and then not having a, a book club section on something relevant in the ending, something that's that that's mind blowing or changing. Um, and feel free to give me comments uh, on that. If, if you would rather see me just move on, or if you would, um, if you want me to just continue, or if you would rather I moved on and then if there's something relevant, just bring it back up. Um, we can try all kinds of things. But uh, I think for next week, I am going to keep reading. Uh, at, at least at the moment, I will. Uh, so there is that. Uh, yeah, anything else? Uh, sorry. Just to see if there's anything relevant that I wanted to bring up. Um, yeah, there's some really cool character exercises in here that I will be doing on my prep stream, which will be Wednesday at 12 p.m. I'm either going to be doing this stuff or I'm going to be doing a role-playing exercise, uh, which might be fun. So, uh, yeah, um, role-playing exercise actually sounds better right now because I'm doing a role-playing design competition. So we'll probably be doing that. So that will be uh, Wednesday from 12 p.m. Eastern to 1.30 p.m. Eastern. Um, so yeah, going to do that. I'm excited. I'm very excited. Other than that, if you guys have any questions for me in the chat, uh, please feel free. Uh, I'm happy to answer any questions uh, about me, about my what I'm doing, what the show's about, uh, my background. Whatever. Ask questions. Uh, I like interacting with you guys. Uh, but that's it for show content for today. Uh, I will be doing design again next weekend because uh, it will be the last day. Uh, so hopefully if I can keep on task properly during the week, uh, you'll be able to see a lot more finished sort of style design elements that we can, we can talk about uh, less questions and more like concrete things and actual writing and stuff. Um, so yeah, uh, any questions? Let me know. And of course I'm available on Twitter, uh, my Twitter handle being at freakladmitsapp, uh, or send me an email through, through the website. Uh, my email's on there, there's a little, a little icon for it, uh, on the bottom of the splash page and on the main page. Uh, so yeah. Give you guys a... A few minutes for, for the delay to catch up. Dun, dun, dun. Yep. All right. Doesn't look like there's anything at the moment. Like I said, send me a whisper, send me a, te send me a tweet, send me an email. Uh, happy to answer your questions. Other than that, I think I'm out for the night. I'm sweating like the dickens right now. It's so hot in here. 
Oh my god. <laughs> it's been really hot recently, so just just sweating, man. Just sweating. Uh, anyway, uh, thanks for coming to hang out with me. Um, I hope you all learned something. I certainly did. Uh, so yeah, take it easy, guys and gals. <laughs>